Now we are being joined by VOA correspondent from London, Al Pessing, to talk to us about uh, the Jihadi John story. Thank you so much for joining us on The World Today. It's a pleasure. Well, the reports we are getting indicates that uh, MI5 blunders, that is, their inability to see that this is coming this time also, allowed Jihadi John to sleep through their net. Why does this keep happening over and over again? You know, to be honest, I think that's a bit of a too simple sort of criticism that you're correct. Some people are making. There are just, you know, thousands and tens of thousands of uh, young Muslim men in this country, in the UK. They travel. They have varying political views. Some may lean toward radicalism. Very, very few will choose the violent path. So, yes, uh, this man was on their radar screen, so to speak. Uh, he was detained a couple of times. He was questioned. But, you know, in a, in, in a democratic society, they can't just throw all these guys in jail if they haven't actually committed crimes. They may restrict their travel. They may put them under some level of surveillance. But there's a whole system of laws to protect the individual. And so, I would tend to agree with Prime Minister Cameron, who says that the security services are getting a bit of a bum rap on this, that they have a difficult job to do, and they, they monitor a lot of people, and uh, according to the Prime Minister, have actually stopped uh, quite a few attacks in recent months, and now you talk about someone who, who managed to leave the country two or three years ago, and then turns up as this uh, Jihadi John figure. It's it's a little bit too easy to point that finger at the security services. A lot of people want to get down to the root <clears throat> cause of the situation, if you agree with me. Uh, the director of the charity organization, Cage, says Mwazi was, well, he was treated unfairly by the British Intelligence Service because of so much pressure from counterterrorism agencies. And that may be the reason why he turned into what he is today. What do you have to say about that? Is that really a concrete excuse for anyone to turn into terrorism? No, it's certainly not an excuse, and that's not what the people from CAGE were saying yesterday. They, they, their comments, I think, have been sort of exaggerated and taken out of context by a, a lot of the reporting on it. They were saying that he, they were, I don't think they were saying he was persecuted by the security services. They said he felt as if he were being persecuted by security services and that this may have contributed to uh, helping push or pull him down the path of radicalization. But they were also very clear in saying that they believed that what he has done was reprehensible and that he as an individual is responsible for the decisions he makes and the violence that he commits. So I think they were saying it's a contributing factor. And, you know, we were just saying a minute ago, why weren't the security services tougher on this man? Well then you could argue that might have pushed him faster and farther toward radicalization. No, instead they questioned him a couple of times. They, they tried allegedly to convince him to become an informant for them within radical organizations. That didn't work out. And then he went back off into society and did what he did. So uh, again, I think it's a little too easy to try to draw direct lines between someone who we've learned today seemed to be quite a normal young man in a relatively prosperous London neighborhood who turns up several years later apparently as this violent jihadi. It's, it, it's obviously a very complicated physical and psychological pathway that he followed. As you've seen earlier in our report, uh, a family member who is quite close to jihadi John could not absolutely believe how he's turned out and that seemed to be the reaction when you ask people who are close to some of those young terrorists, we saw not too long ago two sisters who decided to flee the country to go and join ISIS. Now, this reminds us of stories like the Detroit underwear bomber who, kind of, who came from a well-to-do home and suddenly they drop all the comfort and they go join the extremist group. Why do you think this is happening over and over again? Why this trend? Why this time? Well, again, it's, it's very difficult to know the many factors that will contribute to any individual's development in life, especially when that development leads to crime or to violence. Uh, but, you know, you can also point to uh, some factors which have to do with uh, alienation, may have to do with 
being a part of an ethnic or religious minority in a country, it may have to do with being a teenager. The three girls we spoke about on this program earlier this week, aged 15 and 16. And as you know, when you're a teenager, you get interested in something, you get involved in it, it becomes the most important thing in the world. And then somehow something, somebody, some recruiter or, or something pushes you to take that step of actually leaving your family. And as you were saying, those families were shocked and, and couldn't believe that those girls had done that, just as Jihadi John's family is shocked and can't believe that he did it. Uh, but, you know, you can never really answer why a person does what they do. And you can look, as I said, at any violent criminal or any person who, who does anything outside the norm and say, how could they do that? Why would they do that? It, it's not an easy answer. Before I go to my next question, there is a popular belief that, you know, um, <clears throat> the terrorist group's propaganda machine is quite strong and the Internet is being a major resource center for, for these terrorist groups. What do you have to say about that? Well, that's certainly true, that uh, the jihadi groups are very good at using the Internet, using social media as part of their recruiting, and helping to convince these people who, for whatever combination of reasons, are looking for something and maybe inclined to accept this sort of recruiting, so, yes, they, they use the Internet, and as I was saying the other day, the Internet itself kind of functions to, to expand your knowledge of whatever it is you're interested in, whether you're shopping for something or looking to take a trip or whatever it is. As soon as you start clicking on a particular type of product or, or a subject, these uh, websites automatically suggest you might be interested in this, you might be interested in that, and then the farther you click, the more of this kind of thing you see. And that certainly happens when you're talking about websites that promote a radical narrative, a radical agenda, and then that may lead you into a chat room where you would have an identity, even if it's not your real identity, and then a recruiter can start to talk to you and work with you and try to convince you to take the next step. Okay, is it, so let me, let me take you to the final question because for the first time in a long time we're seeing the family of the beheaded asking uh, for precise, uh, a certain kind of justice. She's calling for that she wants Jihadi John to be caught alive. She doesn't want an honorable death for uh, Jihadi John. How do you see this happen? happen? Do you see this happening? Well, I think it's a lot more likely that he will end up being killed in some sort of a fight or an airstrike than that he would be captured. And as you know, the, some of the various family members of the several people who've been executed by Islamic State, perhaps by Jihadi John himself, have, have uh, said different things in the last 24 hours or so. Some have said, bring him to justice. Some have said, kill him. Some have said, uh, I forgive him. So again, you have a, a variety of human beings with a variety of... Uh, comments and preferences. Uh, but there was also a very interesting thing that was said by the Brits that they they couldn't give any more information for operational reasons was what I read. So that would seem to suggest that, yeah, they are looking for this guy, which would also suggest that, that he is being well and truly hidden by Islamic State. So, you know, I think if you choose that sort of life, and especially if you make yourself a prominent person within that organization, then you are certainly going to be a target of the intelligence and military services that are fighting that organization. Al Pesson, VOA correspondent from London, thank you so much. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have you on the program. We definitely will keep our eye on that story. Thank you so much. Thank you.